Hello, everybody. I want to thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. All week long, I've been teaching about the great wealth transfer. I'll say a little bit more about it today, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to call us and become a partner with VTN. Uh, right here today, our staff is man managing the phones. They're sitting there in their offices waiting to hear from you. So get ready to call. But I want to minister to you first while we're uh, talking about this very thing. So stay tuned. Uh, Arkansas Live starts right now. You may have read or heard my friend Charles Kepps when he prophesied about a financial inversion. Um, a transfer of wealth, and that was in the 70s. Over the years, people have misquoted, misused, perverted, twisted what he said. Um, if you get Annette Capps, his daughter's book, Spirit of Prophecy, she re reiterates what he said in that uh, prophecy. Uh, I've studied it, and it's not what a lot of people think or teach that it is. It's not that God is going to take from the rich and give to the poor. That's communism, Marxism. Um, it's not that it, God is going to steal from the sinner and give to the righteous. None of those things. And the way the Lord explained it to me is he said the, the wealth that the sinner has today I put in the earth, not for the sinner, but for the righteous. The sinner has laid up much wealth. And that wealth was originally designed for the righteous. But because of various reasons, and you have all kinds of examples of that in the Bible where um, Israel or the Israelis, Israelites went in and told all the Egyptians to give them their wealth, and they did, and they left Egypt with it. <laughs> that wealth that Egypt had created was for God's people. So that's where this financial inversion is coming place. Now, there may be exceptions. There may be um, moderations in kind of extreme wealth being traded from right hands to uh, I mean, from one hand to another. I know James Robinson, several years ago, some of you may remember this, he had a man that was a very wealthy man, and he'd gotten saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, whatever it was. He wanted to bless James's ministry, so he came and gave him a whole bunch of uh, rubies and precious jewels and coins and monies and whatever. And James, not wanting to, and he shared this on his broadcast. This was whew, probably 25, 30 years ago. He didn't want to... Uh, be deceived, didn't want people criticizing him, so he threw it all in the lake. <laughs> broke it up, broke up the pottery and threw it in the lake. It was worth a lot of money. And uh, if you remember uh, Oral Roberts when he was building the City of Faith Hospital and he had uh, a dog track owner from Memphis, West Memphis, I think, go and knock on the prayer tower door or go visit with him. I saw an interview with the man and he wanted to give Oral um, the winnings, uh, I'm going to give him a million dollars off the racetrack. Well, the difference is Oral took that money and James refused that money. And while Oral was in the prayer tower, because I was up there with him once during that time, a prostitute there in Tulsa had knocked on the door, the prayer tower, and they went down to see who it was and what they wanted. She wanted to give... <laughs> the money that she had made that night as a prostitute to help build the city of faith. <laughs> and so there are always going to be exceptions. And Brother Roberts took it and was highly criticized for it. But I mean, you don't know if, how God's going to get the money to you, but the wealth of the sinner will eventually find its way into the hands of the righteous. I remember many years ago, uh, our receptionist came to, to me and said, Pastor Caldwell said, uh, there's a lady that came in the front door, uh, I mean the office door, and she handed me a sack. 
And she said, here, this is for the church and for VTM. And the receptionist just said, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Let me get your name and, and address. She said, no, I don't want you to have my name or my address. You just use it however you want to use it. So the receptionist took it up to the accounting department, gave it to her accounting lady and opened it up as $40,000 cash in that sack in a brown paper bag. <laughs> and so she called me, she said, Pastor, what do you want to do with this? Well, I called her, I called our accounting uh, agent at our accountant's office and I said here's what's happened uh, what advice do you give me on this I said I don't I don't necessarily want to take that money and put it in the bank I said I, you know I'm just was joking with him but he said no I understand I said you know in 30 40 minutes the police may drive up and say it was stolen or something he said we'll tell you what you do put it in a separate account and keep it there for 30 days and see if anybody comes to claim it we didn't know how to get in touch with the lady. We didn't know who she was or anything. And, but she wanted to give it to God's work. So that's what we did. We put it in the bank account for 30 days, whatever. Nobody ever claimed it. So the accounting agency said, you can go ahead and deposit it as a donation. We couldn't send anybody a thank you for it. We didn't know where it came from. <laughs> so God will, you know, it could have been drug money. We We had one of those one time. We had a lady that was giving offerings to uh, to VT and to the church, giving offerings. Uh, she was giving a tithe. That's what it was. She was tithing off of her son's drug money. He was a drug dealer and he was selling drugs and she would bring a tithe to the church. So there's all kinds of ways that this wealth transfer can take place, but that's not the norm. That's not what God intended. That's not what he's going to do is, Steal it from the rich and give it to the poor. Steal it from the sinner and give it to the righteous. It, it, the way he explained it to me was uh, that money that has been acquired by uh, the sinner, uh, the ungodly, was originally put in the earth, produced for the righteous. But for whatever reason, the righteous turned it down. Ignorance, tradition, um, denominationalism, whatever it was, uh, he said, I, I'm going to make a transfer. I'm going to start prospering those that will believe me in uh, this transfer of wealth, this, um, as Charles called it, in a financial inversion. And so he said, I want you to share that with people, but they, they have to qualify for this. Uh, Galatians 6, 7, don't be mocked. God is not mocked. Uh, don't be deceived. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So you're going to reap what you sow. And this is what I wanted to share with you today. Two things. God wants you to partake of this rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And he wants you to participate in the wealth transfer. And unless somebody teaches it to you or you hear it, you don't know what to do or how to partake of it. So that's what I'm doing today. And I'm doing it because I, I want to share this with you, minister to you, but I want to let you know we need you as a partner. We need you to sow into VTM. Now our partner special we did several weeks ago uh, did not produce what we believed that it was going to produce. And so I'm coming back asking you, the Arkansas Alive uh, viewing audience uh, today, Live, We have um, our staff members in their office on the phone waiting for you to call. And I'm asking you to be a partner at $30 a month, dollar a day, $1 a day. Everybody can do that. Everybody can give a dollar a day, $30 a month, and become a partner. And qualify yourself uh, by giving to God's work for the judgment seat of Christ and the perpetual wealth transfer. You not only get back in this life, but in eternal life also. That's eternal, perpetual. And I've talked about that this week. So the numbers are on the screen. You can call anytime. I'm going to stop about halfway through and, and just let you focus on that. But you can call anytime and our staff will answer the phone and say, I'm going to be a partner at $30 a month. And, uh, Tell Pastor Caldwell he can count on me. 
I'm going to be there. I love VTN, and I'm going to um, support VTN. Uh, you can text to give. You can go on the website, vtntv.com, and, and let us hear from you. Okay, let me uh, take just a minute here, and then I'll come back to uh, the phone calls. Let me read to you uh, uh, some information about the spirit of wealth. You know, Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, The Lord gives us the power to get wealth so he may establish his, his uh, covenant. Well, uh, uh, wealth is different from prosperity. Wealth is a spiritual force. It's an accumulation of treasures. Prosperity means to succeed, to push forward, to profit. The difference between prosperity and wealth is anybody can prosper by buying, wholesale, selling, retail. Anybody can make a profit. But wealth has a total different connotation. Wealth is a spiritual force. And wealth, it covers generational wealth from family to family. And most families that accumulate wealth usually pass it on down. Now, most, most of the time they could possibly lose it after the third generation because the first generation creates the wealth. The second generation uses the wealth. The third generation spends the wealth. <laughs> and so you got to watch out for that. A lot of corporations, a lot of families, they lose it after the third generation. Because the third generation hasn't been involved in the vision, hasn't been involved in making the money, creating the wealth. They haven't been involved in producing anything. Um, let me go on. Wealth is a spiritual force, a power, a gift from God. He said, I give you, I give you the ability to create wealth. Every Christian should be a giver. Every Christian should meditate on creating wealth. This is not stingy, it's not greed. Um, every Christian does not have the gift of giving listed in uh, uh, the scripture. I've known some people that did have the gift of giving. Uh, the word gift in Romans 12, 6 means extraordinary powers enabling to serve the body of Christ. Now, I have some personal friends that they operate in that gift. They're highly criticized by the world and by a few Christians because they don't understand this gift. But they create this wealth specifically for the sole purpose of giving it away to give to other ministries, to help, to bless the ministries of God. Uh, the word giveth in Romans 12, 8 means to impact one's earthly possessions. With simplicity means these wealth creators give with pure motives. No strings attached. Wealth creators... Give in a way that exceeds the normal. Mm. Therefore, they must have resources that exceed the normal. You can't give what you don't have. You say, well, how did that person give that much? Or why did they give that? Or how did they do that? Because they had it to give. They are purposely creating the wealth to give it, to bless, to be a blessing. The primary purpose of gifting is to create wealth in the marketplace that can benefit the church. Now, you don't hear many people talking about that, but the whole purpose of these people that I'm talking about, like Arne, um, Andrew Carnegie, uh, Peter J. Daniels. Peter J. Daniels told me the, the whole purpose of making money is so he can give it away. He said, that's what the Lord told him to do. He said, and there are people like this today. They, you, you might want to pray about becoming one of them. <laughs> they purposely create wealth so they can give it, 
so they can be a blessing. E.V. Hill, I liked E.V. Hill. He was a preacher's preacher. He said, whatever God can get through you, he can get to you. Don't let it stick to you. Let it pass on through. It's not for you. It's for somebody else. <laughs> no one, now listen to this. Margaret Thatcher said this. Margaret Thatcher was the prime minister in England. No one would remember the good Samaritan if he only had good intentions, but he had money as well. Hmm. It's important for wealth creators to be involved in the church. Now listen to this. So they could get their spiritual batteries charged for their next business deal. Huh. But, you know, I've had some of those people in our church over the years. We had we pastored 35 years, and we had some people like that. And I will have to say the majority of them started with a pure attitude, very humble, unassuming, and they wanted to be less. But the richer they got, the harder it was for them to maintain that humility and to hold on to the money because Satan's always pulling at them. Um, wealth creators think bigger than normal. They have bigger, bigger appetites. And Oral Roberts had on his desk in, uh, at Oral Roberts University, he had a sign that said, no small plans made here. And if you, if you ever get a chance, you need to go to Tulsa and tour the ORU campus. Uh, prayer Tower, that, that was all built in the 60s. And that there was no, no one at that time that had the vision that he had uh, for covering the earth with uh, the Word of God and training the next generation. No small plans made here. Okay, let me uh, read you some more information. Um, God has a unique plan for every person's life. Your job is to find out what that plan is. Our job is to align our finances with his plan. Um, understanding God, uh, understanding God's will with money or what money is for will help you tremendously. Let me read you some facts and figures. I, I like stuff like this. It's, it's, it expands my thinking. Now, this report was in uh, March of 2007, so it's dated. You'd have to increase the facts and figures here uh, to allow for the decades uh, that have passed. The question is, how big is Walmart? Now, this is to expand your thinking. At Walmart, Americans spend $50,000 every hour of every day. This uh, works out to about $30,000 profit every minute. Walmart will sell from January to St. Patrick's Day, more than Target sales all year. Did you get that? So January to March, January for three months. Walmart sells more merchandise from in the first three months of the year than Target sells all year. Walmart is bigger than Home Depot, Kroger, Target, Sears, Costco, and Kmart combined <laughs> that's almost unimaginable walmart is the largest company in the history of the world wow and its headquarters is right here in arkansas walmart sells more food than kroger and safeway com combined and keep in mind they did this in only 15 years during this same time period, 
31 supermarket chains sought bankruptcy, including Winn-Dixie. Walmart now sells more food than any other store in the world. Walmart has approximately 4,000 stores in the U.S., 2,000 are super centers, and this is 1,000 more than it had five years ago. This year, 7.2 billion, with a B, purchasing experiences will occur at Walmart stores. Earth's population is approximately 7, 8 billion, and that same amount will buy something at Walmart. 90% of Americans live within 15 miles of a Walmart. Now you'll know why they build their stores uh, the way they build them. Now those are just some of the figures to, to expand your thinking. We think too small, and, and we've done that because we've been ashamed to talk about these things. Pastors won't preach on them because they're afraid people will think they're just after money. But in, if, if the pastor's heart is true, it's because he wants to get money to you, not from you. He wants to show you that we have a responsibility to finance the gospel. You and I, I have a responsibility to help preach the gospel all over the world. So do you. And that's where VTN comes in. I want to ask you to partner with us. I ask you to give $30 a month. It's a dollar a day. Qualify yourself for this end time wealth transfer and qualify yourself for the rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Qualify yourself. I don't want you to be, I, I, I don't want to be guilty of refusing to share these things with you because I'm afraid of uh, criticism. I'm not. I want you to know the truth and you, the knowledge of the truth will make you free. It'll also uh, make you a blessing. There's no more delight than being a blessing and giving to God's work. And VTN is God's work. So if you would just stop what you're doing, go to the phone, make a call, pick up the phone if you have it on you, and, and dial the number that's on your screen and say, Pastor Caldwell, I'm going to partner with VTN for $40, $30 a month. You can make it 40 if you want to. 30, 60, 100 for one-time gift, whatever God lays on your heart uh, to give. You know, there are people that give to VTN out of their hearts. Uh, we have people all over the state of Arkansas that every few months they'll send a big check, three, four, five, six thousand dollars to bless VTN. Now those people are going to be at the head of the line, <laughs> the judgment seat of Christ and the wealth transfer. God can trust them, and he'll, he'll, he'll create for you. No matter what happens in the uh, uh, national elections, local elections, no matter what party, no matter what the, you know, the economy is doing, God's going to take care of you. He will either reduce your expenses or he will increase your income. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And I've been blessed to see him do it in my life. And I want to always keep that uh, before me, that I want to be a part of what God is doing. I know I've had some minister friends that have had some challenges in building programs, etc. I've, I've sent some of the biggest checks I've ever been able to write to help them. Uh, and I wasn't even a part of their ministry or anything like that. I'm, I would probably never get to use any of their ministry but I knew it was of God and I wanted to help. And you have the privilege of knowing that all of the people in Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Missouri, and in in that our region that we cover, plus the 50 states that we reach by Roku and around the world via live stream. All those people that get blessed, that get ministered to, get saved, healed, delivered. Their minds get renewed. They get blessed in their spirit. All those people are due to your giving. So 
uh, I'd like you to take this opportunity before we close today and pick up the phone and call. Our staff is waiting in their office to receive your call. If the line's busy or whatever, just give a message or call back later or text your message, text what you're going to give, or go online, vtntv.com, and uh, you can click Give, and you can make your donation there. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for all of the viewers today that are watching this program. I pray that you would reveal to them in, in their spirits and in, uh, by your spirit how much we need their support and how much we need their partnership and how much we appreciate them. And I thank you, Father, that you're qualifying them. Uh, you're giving them figures to give, amounts to give. You're blessing them, Father, putting it in their hearts to support VTM, $30 a month, $60, $100, one time gift, whatever they can do to help bless uh, this uh, ministry that you've raised up in Arkansas. And I thank you for it. I, I lift them up to you, Father. I know some of them have needs. Some of them are not able to give. But I ask you to bless them anyway. I ask you to bless them. I ask you to continue uh, to pour out your blessing upon them. And especially at the judgment seat of Christ, awards, rewards, and then at the wealth transfer. Let them be one of those that will receive that financial inversion. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. We've got about 45 minutes left. Pick up the phone and call. Just say, I want to make a pledge to VTM. I want to become a partner for $40, $30 a month. And I want to send you as my gift of appreciation back to you. The spirit of giving. It will bless your life. I've read it three times since I wrote it. And I want you to get it and let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Uh, if the line's busy or you hadn't been able to get through, write the number down. You can call uh, anytime. Thank you for joining me. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever you're watching, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on X at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.